Hi folks, this is Calc 1 Quiz 18. We're asked to find the area bounded by the graphs of two functions, cosine 2x and sine 2x, on the interval minus pi to pi. Now we know from class I can get the area between two curves by integrating the top curve minus the bottom curve dx. So the question remains, how do I figure out which is the top curve and which is the bottom curve? So the first thing I have to do is find out where the curves intersect. So I need to find <clears throat> the points where y equals cosine 2x as well as y equals sine x. In other words, I need to know where the cosine of 2x is equal to the sine of x. And the immediate difficulty is what's inside the trig functions here. The argument of the trig functions are different. This is cosine of 2x, that's just sine of x. So I need to convert one of these into the form of the other. And I can do that with the cosine of 2x using a trig identity. That's 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And since I've got a squared term and a non-squared term, I'm going to get everything on one side and zero on the other. Now, if I think about this, <clears throat> this is a quadratic in disguise. If I think of u being the sine of x, then I get the quadratic equation, 0 equals 2u squared plus u minus 1. And that factors nicely for us as 2u minus 1, u plus 1. This gives u equals a half or u equals negative 1. But u is equal to the sine of x, so we get the sine of x is equal to 1 half, or the sine of x is equal to negative 1. There's infinitely many solutions to each of these equations, but I restrict my attention to what's on, going on between minus pi and pi. So the sine of x is a half between minus pi and pi, so thinking on the unit circle, I'm looking for angles here and here. I get x equals pi over 6 in quadrant 1, and 5 pi over 6 in quadrant 2, who have a sine of a half. For sine x equals negative 1, that's going to be negative pi over 2. So these are where the graphs intersect. So I can put those on the number line, <clears throat> and that'll tell me which curve is on the top and which curve is on the bottom. So here's negative pi in pi. I'm going to put these on here in increasing order. So minus pi over 2, pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. And I'm just going to check these intervals in between. So this is like finding a sine diagram. Instead of looking for positive or negative, we're looking for who's bigger, cosine 2x or sine 2x. Why this works is the same reason the sine diagram works. It's the intermediate value theorem and continuity. Okay, so I need a convenient number between minus pi over 2 and minus pi, uh, negative 3 pi over 4. A number between minus pi over 2 and pi over 6, 0. Between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, pi over 2. Between 5 pi over 6 and pi, well, we could do 11 pi, say, over 12. I plug in negative 3 pi over 4 to each of these guys, and I would get the cosine of negative 3 pi over 2 which is 0, versus the sine of negative 3 pi over 4, which is negative radical 2 over 2. Which of these is bigger? Well, this cosine is. So cosine of 2x is what the top curve is here. Now I plug in 0. The cosine of 2 times 0 is cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. The sine of 0, however, is 0. So which is bigger here? The cosine of 2x. Let's plug in pi over 2. 
The cosine of 2 times pi over 2 is the cosine of pi, which is negative 1. The sine of pi over 2, on the other hand, is positive 1. So sine of x is now what's on top. Finally, we're looking between 5 pi over 6 and pi. I plug in 11 pi over 12. Multiply that by 2, I'm looking at the cosine of 11 pi over 6. And the cosine of 11 pi over 6 <clears throat> is square root 3 over 2. I plug 11 pi over 12 into sine, I get the sine of 11 pi over 12. And the question is, how does that compare square root 3 over 2? We could use a half angle formula if we wanted to, or I can just think about the sine. 11 pi over 12 is just shy of pi. The sine of four, uh, excuse me, 2 pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2. And anything beyond 2 pi over 3 down to pi is going to be something less than square root 3 over 2. So whatever this number is, it's going to be less than that. Which means the cosine of 2x is what's on top again. Okay, so the cosine of 2x is on top on three of the four intervals. We can sketch the problem situation and then we'll have a pretty good idea as to what's going on. Okay, with this data we can actually go ahead and find the area by subtracting top minus bottom. Uh, but I still want to, it's always good to help visualize what's going on. So we'll say this is minus pi, this is pi. We'll graph the sine of x here in blue. So sine of negative pi is 0, and then about halfway through at negative pi over 2, we're going to be down at negative 1, and then at 0, we're back to 0, and then halfway through, we're up at positive 1, and then at pi, we're back to 0. So we have a nice sine curve sitting in there. And the cosine 2x curve, we kind of know how that's going to go, but this helps us know where it's above and below and intersect this other curve. So at negative pi over 2, we know the two curves are going to intersect. They're going to intersect the next time at pi over 6. Let me label this. Then again at 5 pi over 6. And the cosine curve is going to start up, cosine of negative 2 pi is going to be 1. So it's going to start up here. And it's going to come down, cross through the axis, come back up to 1, go down, cross through the axis, come back up, and finish up there. So if I'm looking for the area then, it's the area there, there, there and there. So we're going to break the integral up into a few pieces here. We always take top curve minus bottom curve. Now if I look between negative pi and negative pi over 2 and then from negative pi over 2 to pi over 6 the top curve is the cosine of 2x. So I can make that one integral. So negative pi to pi over 6. The top curve cosine 2x minus the bottom curve sine x dx. That's going to take care of the area here and here. Now I need to take care of the area there. x goes from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. Top curve here is sine x. Minus the bottom curve which is cosine 2x dx. And finally, for the last leg of the journey, I'm integrating from 5 pi over 6 to 2 pi, or excuse me, to pi. Top curve, cosine 2x, minus bottom curve, sine x, dx. And you go through and take your antiderivative, negative, you're going to get a 1 half sine 2x plus cosine 2x, plug in the limits of integration, and do the whole fundamental theorem of calculus gig you're going to get for a grand total answer 3 square root 3 and then whatever the units are squared. So that'll do it for quiz 18.